Hi, this is Melanie Porto-Conti, and we're going to talk about human trafficking, a very um, important and current topic in today's world. So we come from a place of healing. It is possible to heal and help us move into a place of wellness and engage with hope. And that is something that's so important as we learn about human trafficking that we are able to do with, to help our women and girls and sometimes boys help heal from trafficking experiences. We're gonna learn about those right now. So what is human trafficking? The definition of human trafficking, according to the tra Federal Trafficking Victims Protection Act is, it's the recruitment, transportation, transferring, harboring, or receipt of persons by improper means, such as force, fraud, or coercion, for an improper, improper purpose, including forced labor, including involuntary servitude, debt bondage or slave or sexual exploitation. And lots of people think it only happens in places other than the United States. But in fact, there are over 100,000 people trafficked in the United States. And 80% of those people are US citizens trafficked by US citizens. Uh, yes, there is some trafficking over the border, but only 20% of the people coming across the, our southern borders are the amount of, of people trafficked from foreign nationals. Um, the people from Central America and the Northern Triangle comprise just a small part of those. Uh, well, as I said, 80% of all people trafficked in the United States are U.S. citizens trafficked by U.S. citizens. Of the non-foreign nationals, which of the 100,000, it's only about 14,000, they can come from anywhere from Russia, Eastern Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Southeast Asia, China. As I said, that's a small percentage. So 80% of those traffic in the United States are US citizens trafficked by US citizens. So what comprises a trafficking situation? Which means, um, action where somebody is induced into a trafficking situation they are recruited and we have a very big problem now with youth being recruited over the internet and via social media if someone harbors a youth or a woman or a man for the purpose of being trafficked transports them across state lines or provides or obtains them for the purpose of sex or labor trafficking the means whether they use force, fraud, or coercion, whether there's a purpose, whether it's for commercial sex trafficking, and that can include child pornography. It can include um, online enticement. It can include stripping, exotic dancing, or for labor services, okay? So minors induced into commercial sex trafficking are human trafficking victims, regardless if force, fraud, or coercion is present. So what is force, fraud, or coercion? Force is physical restraint or serious physical harm, including rape, beatings, and physical confinement. Fraud, wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain, including false promises. And coercion, uh, which is there's a plan, a pattern to intend to cause a person to believe that failure to perform an act would result in harm or restraint. But for those under 18, we do not need to prove force fraud or coercion. Someone under 18 is automatically a victim if they are in a trafficking or exploitive situation. What kinds of trafficking do we see? And be aware of overlaps. So commercial sexual exploitation, as I said, can be online exploitation, um, asking youth to send explicit photos and asking to meet up with them. Um, instances of child pornography, instances of um, stripping, um, sending nude photos, uh, coercing youth to come out and meet men at night. Familial trafficking, we do see here in the United States and in New York State, and sometimes in Canada, we also see it. Family members, whether it be a parent, an extended family member, member trafficking, the youth or young adult in that situation. Pimp controlled trafficking. 
that is the one we commonly see in the movies or hear about. Um, and that does happen, but not in the way we necessarily think it does. It isn't always the guy with the big hat and the Cadillac that's doing it. It can be a young person that they knew from school, or it can be a woman, okay? It can be a market handler. Uh, oftentimes we see with young adults that they have market handler. Survival trafficking, we often find among runaway and homeless youth who have left home and somebody will lure them in to stay with them in exchange for sexual favors. We also see that with begging rings. They will um, coerce people who are homeless into begging um, at street corners, at the ends of highways, and they will house them in substandard placement in exchange for the money they, they catch, uh, that they get from begging and um, in exchange for sexual favors. Gang trafficking. Um, Pre-COVID, we used to see a lot of this where gangs would traffic female gang members, but we haven't seen that quite as much during COVID. Um, during COVID, we have seen a lot of online trafficking and uh, exploitation of um, young people. And drug trafficking. Um, drug trafficking sometimes is related to human trafficking, but just as often it's not. Okay, labor trafficking, we do see this, although it's not talked about as much as sex trafficking. We can often see it agricultural situations like farms, um, migrant workers, animal husbandry, uh, traveling sales crews, hotels. Uh, we oftentimes during um, tourist season, we'll see um, labor contractors bringing people up to work at the track, to work at hotels, um, whether it's Niagara Falls, whether it's uh, Lake George, Saratoga, um, any of the tourist hubs. Um, we'll see in landscaping, in the food industry, sometimes we'll see um, people who are 9, 10, 11 working in a restaurant. Um, another favorite we often see is people being brought from other countries with the promise of citizenship working in a restaurant, oftentimes having to sleep there, as well as illicit, illicit massage parlors, et cetera. Bonded labor, again, um, we oftentimes will see that labor contractors will uh, promise to bring someone over the border or into the country um, and they will pay their way, but then the person is indentured to them for decades and can't get out and is in a forced labor situation, whether it's working on a, a chicken farm, um, a slaughterhouse, farm labor, all of those kinds of things. And yes, it does still exist. Debt bondage, very similar to bonded labor. Involuntary domestic servitude. Again, oftentimes people brought from other countries with the promise of getting a visa and permanent residency and um, having to work as a domestic oftentimes having to sleep in substandard places and not uh, having access to um, citizenship, not getting any wages and often being held in that situation for years on end. Okay, and organ trafficking, this is something new that we're seeing that people are trafficked with a specific person purpose of for harvesting their organs for organ transplants. Okay, so each type of trafficking has its own unique strategies or recruiting and controlling victims and concealing the crime. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Risk factors are oftentimes found in people who have already experienced sexual, verbal, physical, and emotional abuse. So you think about some of the, the youth that we see. Some of the 80% of those people trafficked in the US by US people, they oftentimes have been sexually verbally, physically, and emotionally abused, which makes them more vulnerable. If they have mental and physical disabilities, um, with the people that I work with, I see a lot of people with um, mental health diagnoses, mostly from their complex trauma that they have experienced at the hands of the traffickers, but sometimes it's because of chaotic family situations and similar things against all, against all uh, socioeconomic conditions. Substance use, sometimes happens after they've been in a trafficking or exploitive situation, or sometimes they're lured into trafficking situations through their substance use. Unstable housing, um, we see this a lot, particularly um, in the wake of the pandemic. A lot of people are unstably housed. People are 
are being evicted. Um, so unstable housing oftentimes causes people to be vulnerable, be in survival mode, and will do what they think they have to do to survive. Runaway and homeless youth, as we talked about, are extremely vulnerable because they oftentimes have left an abusive situation at home and run right into the arms of someone who is going to traffic them um, because they need a place to have their basic needs met. Uh, oftentimes, youth who've been in a history of foster care or lack of healthy adult attachments um, and a high ACE so score, which some of you may um, be familiar with, childhood um, trauma. Single mothers, oftentimes to make ends meet. University students, we have seen university students as well who will get into a trafficking situation, um, being their first time away from home, being lured into making some money to cover their expenses at college. Refugees, migrant workers, immigrants, and visa holders, including B1, B2, A3, G5, J1, F1, H2A, and H2B are all very vulnerable to traffickers because of the labor contractors. Behind every trafficking experience is the exploitation of vulnerabilities. Not just, not just girls, women, boys, men, and LGBTQ individuals. So how do people recruit youth for com commercial sexual exploitation of children? Oftentimes you'll hear on the news or on social media that somebody was kidnapped by the white van in the Walmart parking lot. That is less than 3% of all situations. That is not to say that there aren't predators out there who may kidnap a child, um, but that is not a trafficking situation. Um, social media would have you believe that, but that's just not the situation. Much more often we see familial trafficking recruitment from uh, a mother's boyfriend, a father's girlfriend, a cousin, um, a half brother, a, a you know, distant relation, those kinds of things. Caretakers, neighbors, family, friends, teachers, yes, it does happen. Also do recruitment, seduction. Oftentimes people are coerced. The traffickers are very manipulative people and will are able to read um, our young women like a book and will sort, uh, seduce them into the situation, making them feel like this is their boyfriend, the only person that will care for them. Making false promises. We've seen a number of youth fall prey to trafficking situations um, because they've been lured in on the internet and other ways into modeling contracts, uh, high paying jobs, and those turn out not to be. Violence, uh, again, oftentimes, um, our young men and women will be coerced by violence. Somebody in their community befriends them and then um, coerces them and then resorts to violence to keep them in their trafficking situation. Peers, uh, this is one thing we're seeing a lot um, with our youth that older peers are coercing them into sending pictures to the peer and the peer sends those out for um, prospective buyers and the youth get into trafficking situations um, through a lot of apps like Skip the Games, um, OnlyFans, uh, Kick, all kinds of things to, and their peers are actually promoting them, um, selling themselves online and exploiting them. Uh, so we talked about false advertisement for jobs and those kinds of things. Social media is a big problem now, particularly during the pandemic. Youth were home, youth had a lot more access to social media, um, their electronics, and could easily be coerced into a relationship, sharing photos, um, all kinds of things that have led to some pretty serious exploitive situations all around the state and the nation internationally. Um, also shame. Sometimes our young people will share pictures of themselves, um, sexually explicit pictures, and are shamed into um, meeting up with men, um, 
getting into exploitive situations because they have been shamed. So it's more about some uh, recruitment of commercial sexual exploitation victims. Sometimes it's their intimate partner. We oftentimes see a boyfriend will coerce their partner into just one time having relations with a friend of theirs. Just help them make rent. Just help them make their car payment. As I talked about seduction, peers, false promises, family trafficking, posing as a benefactor. I'll help you get money for college if you just do me some favors. I can help you get a movie contract, a modeling contract, any kinds of things. I'll be your mentor. Violence, job offer. Um, I've seen this happen. Yet you can come and, and work for me. You can, you can be my, um, my hostess at the after party. Um, all kinds of things like that. Again, social media and shame. So how do labor trafficking victims get into this? Oftentimes through a job offer for advertisements. Okay, That's one place where we do see people from um, our southern borders getting um, coerced and uh, being fed false promises because oftentimes the labor recruiters will go to the uh, Central American countries and say, we will help you get to the United States to work on a farm, to work on, um, to work on landscaping, to work at a hotel, uh, and not just the southern border. Again, we do see a lot of Eastern Europeans um, and people from Africa uh, and Southeast Asia offered to come to the United States. They'll have to pay upward of $10,000, $15,000 for promises for a job, uh, sometimes a glamorous job, and it'll turn out being working in a meat processing plant uh, doing the work that nobody else wants to do um, on a farm, uh, working, you know, 12, 13, 14 hours in a restaurant, um, and working off that debt of coming to the United States. Again, false promises, which is fraud, blackmail and threats, which is coercion. Um, if you don't stay and work, and if you complain to anybody, we will have you deported. And that is a very common thing. Um, familial involvement. Uh, oftentimes we'll see family bringing uh, somewhat distant relatives over to work in their restaurant or their business, violence, smuggling re related, although cross-border smuggling or smuggling into the United States isn't always human trafficking. Sometimes it is just smuggling and charging exorbitant fees to get people into the United States and shame. So red flags for labor trafficking, and we do see this in our midst, uh, as I said, at the hotels in our resort areas, um, at the racetrack, um, in the fields, laboring, picking the vegetables for us, it, in the wineries up in the western part of New York State and other places. Um, so they're working long and unusual hours, living where they work, often in substandard housing, living with a large group of people, sometimes 40 people in a house, in a small house. We had some people from Southeast Asia here in our area, um, in the Albany Schenectady area a few years ago, living in a house on our Central Avenue with 47 people sleeping in one house. And it turned out to be a labor trafficking situation of massage parlors and a restaurant. Okay, identification documents held by a third party transported to and from work by an employer. Sometimes those are the white vans that, that drop off people at the massage parlor or restaurants or those kinds of things, okay? They're not allowed or able to speak for themselves. They're fearful of authorities and they have third-party control of their schedule and their social interaction. And there's evidence of violence. Oftentimes they'll present to urgent care or the emergency room with work-related injuries and other injuries indicative of uh, labor trafficking. Lack of knowledge about the community and local areas. And labor trafficking is very common, but oftentimes under our radar. Also, uh, another red flag is lack of proper medical care, including chronic back pain, muscle strains, cardiovascular and respiratory issues related to exposure to chemicals 
in industrial injuries, not free to come and go as they please, unpaid or paid very little or paid only through tips, not allowed breaks, owes a large debt and unable to pay it off, does not have the proper licenses for the job, and answers appear to be scripted. Uh, now, as I said, you know, recently in our area, we had a woman who brought over somebody to be a cook um, in a local Thai restaurant. And she had promised the woman that she would get her a visa and actually kept her for three years working in the restaurant and staying there um, without paying her anything and never following through on a promise to get a visa. Um, we've had others where a woman was brought over from India to work for somebody who's vaguely related to her. She was made to sleep in a closet, take care of the children um, all hours of the day and night, do all the cooking and the cleaning and never received any money. And when her um, adult children realized something was wrong, they brought in um, Homeland Security and were able to get her out of that situation. And that's all in my little corner of the world. Okay. Um, Oftentimes we'll see condoms in the parking lot of a massage parlor, okay? So red flags for commercial sexual exploitation and commercial exploitation of children is multiple cell phones or multiple phone numbers, evidence of a controlling relationship by either boyfriend, talking about the game or the life, looks down when talking to you, no eye contact or has belligerent affect responses, has expensive things that were gifted or expresses that he, she needs to pay someone back for something. The child is with an older person that they're not related to. We see that a lot. Clothing that is not appropriate for the time of the year. Teased by other students for being sexually active or a prostitute. And we've seen that with some of our middle school students who've been exploited. And that was kind of the first red flag where we knew uh, what was going on. Okay, sexually pro provocative pictures on the phone or online accounts. And yes, in my work, we do monitor those to try to help keep the youth safe. Okay. Some other sub symptoms are symptoms of domestic violence because there are similarities in domestic violence and human trafficking. Lack of ID, censored communication, frequently out of town or transient, Inconsistent stories when they talk to us. Personal hygiene items in the place of business or work. Okay, so they're showering at work or cleaning, uh, you know, taking care of their personal hygiene at work in a way that's beyond the norm of what we would do. Changes in appearance, friends, sexually exploitive um, notations, level of sexualization, activities and locations, tattoos and branding above the breast with vaginal line, matching tattoos with a trafficker, underarm, back of neck, behind the ear and the ankle, okay? Some of the things that you might see with somebody who has been trafficked. If you look, you'll see signs of violence on this young person's neck where somebody has been grabbed by the throat and strangled or attempted to be strangled. Malnutrition, Depression and suicidality is a very important consideration. Work-related injuries, PTSD, chronic pain, sometimes pregnancy. PTSD, as I said, is a very, very common thing with very complex trauma. Substance use or misuse. Uh, and this is, we see sometimes pre-existing use which made them vulnerable or particularly with our young people, I've seen it as young as 12 or 13, they are introduced by a trafficker. We had a 13 year old almost overdose on heroin, uh, except a bystander came along who had um, naloxone. Okay. Uh, substance is used as a method of control and manipulation. Sometimes people have been trafficked, use it as self-medication. Heroin, benzos, meth and others and intoxicate intoxication or overdose withdrawal is something that we do see with trafficked individuals, whether they're youth or adults. Pregnancy, um, very real consideration because as I said, think about this in terms of 80% of the people in the US who are trafficked are US citizens trafficked by 
US citizens. Reproductive coercion. Oftentimes the traffickers will rape the girls, the women that are with them, and are forced to have a baby and then they will keep the baby. Or um, the morbidity is higher for adolescent girls than adults, or the trafficker may force them to have unsafe abortions. 10 to 50% of women who have unsafe abortions have complications. And when infants are born, they're born with acute and chronic conditions. And as I said, if the woman is allowed to have her child, the trafficker oftentimes will keep the child and give it to a mother or a relative, and the woman is not allowed access to the child as a means of manipulation and control. That is the end of my presentation. Um, please ask me any questions you wish to know about this. Thank you.